Opal Beaters, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this wire wrapped graduated fan pendant necklace. So we have two versions, one of them has these bead caps on each end and the other one is just left wire wrapped like that so depending on what you have and what you want to do you can decide whether to use them or not today. I will go ahead and show you with the bead caps, but either way is up to you. A lot of these materials you'll be able to find at bbcraft.com. They're an online jewelry making and craft supply store. I will leave the links to everything down below as well as the materials list and other helpful information. But we'll go through the materials real quick before we get started. So first of all, you are going to need approximately four feet of a 24 to 28 gauge wire. I'm going to be using this one today. This color kind of coordinates with this Mookite pendant I have here. Then we will need about 8 inches of an 18 to 22 gauge wire. You're going to need a 50 millimeter curved tube noodle bead like this. You'll need a fan gemstone pendant. This is a 13 piece pendant that ranges from 12 to 30 millimeters. This one came from beadboxbargains.com. They currently have one hematite color available as of the time that I'm filming this video for only $1.49. I will try to link that one below as well. You can also find them on various sites online if you just do a Google search. I will also try to link some that I found on eBay. Other than that, of course, you'll need two bead caps. I'm using these that are more of a cone shape. That way they will kind of cover up a little bit of our wire there. You'll also need some chain of your choice, some jump rings and a clasp, and of course your pliers and wire cutters. I have some round nose pliers here for making these loops on either end, and then some chain nose pliers. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my wire to the lengths that I need, and then we can go ahead and get started. All right, so I have my wire cut, and the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to be taking away two of these end pieces of the 13-piece pendant because we are actually going to be using 11 pieces on our pendant. So just set those aside. You can save them for another project or something else because as we add the wire, it is going to space out these beads, and that just will allow us some extra room on this tube. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your smaller gauge wire and you're going to go ahead and string it all the way through the 11 pieces of your pendant. Make sure your pendant pieces are facing the same way as you can see with a lot of these style pendants. There is a back and a front side so just keep in mind you want to have them all facing the correct way. And then pull the pendant beads down to the center of that four foot section of wire as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect just make sure you have approximately equal amounts of wire on each side. Then you're going to be tacking one side down to one end of the tube. So I'm going to start with the left side and I'm just wrapping this around about three times just so that kind of stays in place there and you're going to want to keep hold of that while you're wrapping so that the wire doesn't slip off of the tube bead while you're working because it is pretty slippery. Then you're going to take your right side and you're going to tack that down. And I'm going to be doing about three coils on this side. So you should have something that looks like this. Now we're going to be working from right to left. We're going to be taking this wire right here and we're going to be tacking down each of these pendant beads in the spaces in between the beads. So take your wire on the right side and then wrapping it behind the two bead, pull it then in between your first two beads just like that. And then wrap it over top of the two bead, swing back around, bring your wire up through the center of the next two beads, wrap your wire over top of the tube again, and keep doing that until you have all your beads tacked down to the tube. While you're tacking each one down, just pay attention to the tension on the wire. Make sure it's tight enough to where these beads are starting to stay right in place along the curve of the tube. And also try to pay attention to the end piece of wire to make sure it doesn't slip off on you. So just take your time. Definitely don't want to rush this part. And just going back to front through each of those spaces in between the beads and then taking a moment just to straighten everything out again. 
All right, so we're almost to the other side. Just keep on going. And end it right there with that left wire right over the top. And so that's what you should have there. And now we're gonna be working from left to right with the wire we haven't used yet, the longer piece. And we're just going to do the opposite of what we just did going from here over here. So it'll start getting a little bit easier because the beads are now tacked down into place, but you still need to just be careful that your wire doesn't slip off the tube. So again, just take your time. I'm going over the top to the back and tacking the beads in place again. So I'm going over the top of the bead behind, bringing it up through the space in between the two beads, going behind, swinging it back up in between the space, and so on. And you can make sure this is nice and tight. As you go, you want the pendant to definitely feel like it's tight to the tube and not moving around too much. And the more you wrap it, the tighter it's gonna feel. So keep going until you're at the other end. I'm just gonna scooch this down a little bit so that it feels like it's even on each side. There we go, and then our final wrap right there. Okay, so here's where we are now with an even amount of wire pretty much on each side again. We're gonna work from left to right again. So take your left side and swing it up and over the top of the tube, bring it back behind around the space in between the first two pendant beads, swing it over the top again and bring it in between the space and keep doing that. I'm just going to keep going all the way to the end. There we go. That's what we have so far. Now we just have a little short end here and we're going to take our longer piece that is on the right side and we're going to work from right to left and do the opposite of what we just did. So swing it over the top in between the first two pendant beads over the top and keep going like that and just keep wrapping it to the tube. This will be our final wrap. So make sure everything is in place and make sure this final wrap is nice and tight. All right, so this is what it should look like from the front. Here is a little peek at what it looks like on the back. And at this point, if you have enough extra wire and you want to wrap them a little bit more, feel free to do that. Otherwise, you're just going to be ending the wire wrap here by wrapping this around the tube in a tight little coil like that. You can wrap it as much as you want. And then do the same thing on the other side. So just take your end piece of wire and just start coiling it around. And there you go. And if you want to, you can just tuck in these end pieces of wire right into the tube. Just like that, you can just pull it through. That way you don't have any ends sticking out. And that'll just secure the wire even more so it doesn't slide off. And I'm just going to clip these ends off right there at the tube. There we go. Now I'm gonna bring back the two bead caps and I'm gonna bring back that eight inch piece of aluminum wire. We're going to just slide this right through the tube till it pops out the other side. And you wanna have about equal lengths on each side of that. Now go ahead and take one of these bead caps and pop it on so that the slimmest part is on the outside just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and curve this up just so it doesn't move around too much. And now we're gonna make a wire wrapped loop. I'm taking my round nose pliers kind of at the tip there and I'm gonna hold on to the wire like that and make a 90 degree angle. Then I'm gonna reposition, slide the wire back to the wider portion of the pliers Swing that over the top, just like that. 
Then I'm going to pull the pliers out, reposition that onto the bottom, and then continue the curve of this wire to make about a 90 degree angle. There is our loop there. Now I'm just going to switch hands because that's easier for me. I'm going to put this back on the pliers and hold it loosely just so it keeps that round shape. And I'm going to take my other pair of pliers and gripping on to this piece, I'm going to swing this neatly around about three times. I'm just pinching that together nicely. I'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess. There we go. Pinch that back into place so our coil is nice. And don't worry if your coil is bent a little bit, you can bend that out in whichever direction you want it to be once your other side is complete. So that's one end. Now just push everything down so your bead cap is sitting nicely at the end of that tube and it's not sliding around. All right, I slid my bead cap down on this side and now we're just gonna make our next wire wrapped loop. So go ahead and get your round nose pliers again. Going toward the tip of the pliers, make a 90 degree angle with your wire. Then reposition the wire toward the back of the pliers and swing your wire up and around to start the loop. Reposition it, put it on the bottom and then complete your loop and have your wire going in a 90 degree angle. Then I'm just going to switch hands because that's more comfortable for me. So your bead cap is tight to the tube and also try to match the number of loops you have on the other side. There we go and I'm just going to cut off this excess as close as I can and just tuck that little end in with my pliers there, just bend that in so it's not sticking out. And then you can just pull these loops up if you want them facing up kind of like that, just kind of have them facing the same way. And that's all there is to it. That's your wire wrap pendant. And from here, you can go ahead and put that on your chain or whatever material you want to use to incorporate this into a necklace. We'll go ahead and pop it on a chain now. I have my chain and my jump rings all ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of the jump rings and pop that onto the loop of one end of that pendant and pop it onto the chain. And these are pretty pliable and I can use my fingers to close that by turning it. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just pop that on to this loop and add on this segment of chain. And then turn to close and now we'll add our clasp. There we go. You close that on there. So here's a look at our finished pendant. You can use whatever color wire you want, whatever color bead caps you want. And again, you don't have to use the bead caps. You can leave them off if you just prefer that wire wrapped look, or perhaps you don't have the bead caps to use. There is the cherry quartz version of that pendant along with that hematite. So again, I'm gonna leave the links to all these products that I use down below. If not the exact product, it'll be something very similar. So definitely check the information section below the video for more information. It was really fun to come up with a new way to use these graduated fan pendants, as well as these silver tubes. Remember, I got one of these in a boss's bead bag, and that's what inspired me to come up with this design. So perhaps you have one of these tubes in your stash or one of these graduated pendants, or maybe you want to go ahead and try your hand at making one of these. Either way, I hope this was a fun tutorial for you guys. Please feel free to leave me a comment or question down below. I always love to hear from you. I will be back soon with more tutorials, finished jewelry updates, subscription unboxings, and lots more beading fun. So I hope you'll stick around with me. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always, 
Happy beating. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to give it a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. Check out the information section under the video for links to my social media handles and other helpful info. And feel free to check out my shop at orchidinopal.com. Thanks for watching.